right, coming up next, they are a, a part of the Minnesota Composting Council. Please give a warm welcome for Jenny Black. Well, thank you. Let's see, I probably should use, is, is this still, it is still on. Um, first of all, thank you so much for that beautiful start to the event. That really was wonderful, and I, I truly appreciate it. And I, I think we should give them a round of applause again. <laughs> It's great. And uh, to you, Brian, I am a recovering bureaucrat too. Joyously so. <laughs> I want you to know. So, um, probably have to put this on to figure out which button to push. To the left. To the right of the circle, your other left. <laughs> Let's try it. <gasps> Woo! It worked. Um, <laughs> so I am currently the chair of the Minnesota Compost Council, and um, I also have um, a company which I prefer not to make any money with or even work, but um, the Black Gold Recycling is the title of it, and it goes with composting, of course. Uh, am I doing something wrong here? It's the circle, not it's the button at the top. Oh. There we go, get me back on there. So who am I? They asked, one of the questions they asked us was, um, tell people about what's not on the internet about yourself. And I'm like going, wow. Well, I don't even know what's on the internet. I don't ever go look. <laughs> um, so I had to go look first to figure that out. And um, I was born and raised here in the Twin Cities. That's not on there. I'm the oldest of 10. I've been married for 43 years. I've served on the Bassett Creek Watershed Management Commission for the last 12 or 15 years. I don't really have a clue which one, but somewhere in there. Um, <laughs> it's been a while. I've worked on recycling issues since 1975. I happen to be able to live pre-internet. I happen to be able to live in the city of Minneapolis, South Minneapolis, where they had the very first drop-off recycling uh, station on 29th and Nicollet, and um, used it until the city wanted to close it. That created quite a stir, and um, I teamed up with uh, the local Audubon chapter, the Sierra Club, the League of Women Voters, and we just had a whole bunch of people, a couple of council members, and we had a uh, news event at the feet of the Father of Waters, and we gathered up bags and bags of aluminum cans, stacked them up around there, and had an event, and it was covered, and it's, I still have the news clipping somewhere, but um, it was really a lot of fun, and it kept the recycling drop sites open. And so, I'm very proud of that. It was a lot of work for us all. <laughs> um, um, we built a 100% a, a recyclable milk carton boat and <laughs> raced it in the Aquitennial. We came in second. It was really heavy. Um, <laughs> I have a picture of that, too. It was all plastic milk carton bottles. We had a special run. They were sealed. It was in the shape of a milk carton. It was really, really a good time. Um, and I also then, uh, which is gets me to my topic today, I was the first um, program coordinator for the first organics, commercial organics collection program here in the metro area. Um, and um, we can move on, because you know that one. Um, I uh, started working on environmental issues. I, I was my first quarter at the university, April of 1970, so the very first Earth Day. And it was a big deal on campus then. It was a lot of, it was really interesting to, to be there. I have a degree, self-written, Man and Nature, a Holistic View from the University of Minnesota. Anything that was science-based, political science, social science, physical sciences, philosophy, that was all part of that. Um, and looking at man's interaction with the environment and what most um, impacts our interaction, and it turns out to be pretty much religion. Um, so, um, moving on, um, I worked um, at the Pollution Control Agency, people here I'm sure are quite familiar with that, um, for a long time. Actually, it was many smaller um, state agencies that eventually got rolled into that. 
And um, I worked doing um, everything from source reduction to landfilling and everything in between. So we, um, I, I had a really strong background in that. I did that for, I don't know, 15 years or something like that. Um, but eventually, I started um, focusing on composting. And I served on the U.S. Compost Council Board of Directors for 15 years, and I now am the chair of their foundation. Wrap it up, she says. So commercial, is a, uh, commercial composting is a hot process. Backyard composting or composting at um, um, gardens or in your backyard is a cold process. And there's a big difference, and that creates um, a lot of the reason why you can only put certain things in them. Um, the markets, stormwater management, big issue. And this really plays into the social justice issues with respect to clean water and clean air. Um, I'm working with the US, the Compost Council's Research and Education Foundation to develop a brochure on compost and climate change because it turns out that putting compost back into the soils is um, storing, creating carbon storage. And so it's, it's got some real value in that way, as well as many other values <laughs> that I, I won't go into today because she told me to wrap it up. So um, barriers um, and markets are barriers still. We still have to work a lot on that because we produce a large amount, even with the small amount of material we're collecting right now, and we have to find markets because we haven't truly recycled it, as you all know, unless you have an end use for it. Otherwise, you just collected it. Um, opportunities, sequestering of carbon, local jobs, this material, both collecting it and producing the compost is very heavy. You cannot transport it very far. So it is collected and produced, the compost, right here. And so we have good paying jobs as a result of that. And there's my gardens with my cats. I love that picture. <laughs> One of my gardens. So, <laughs> One more time, give it up for Jenny Black.